want to start by uh, talking about this program. Um, we have uh, the apocalypse. <laughs> And then we have Euclid. So re two really interesting pieces, both large scale, both really hefty. Um, and there's a certain synergy between them, but I'd love to hear your ideas about um, the, these, the two pieces together tonight, how they felt for you and, and the company and introducing us to, to what you do. I, I thought that the, the two pieces together were interesting. For one thing, as my son said, oh, they both make a mess. That, that kind of <laughs> uh, holds them together. And, but in a way, it does, you know, occupying the space with things as well as humans. But I thought that having a piece that was um, a coming more from an intellectual place, uh, in, con uh, in contrast, really, to a, a, a more emotional place was a good journey. Oh, that's a, um, that's a great point. Because we are full human beings, and we have both of those things. So that was a sort of simple way of describing why I thought it was good. It was also um, a, uh, an opportunity, since this is such a special venue and it means so much, I think, to dancers across the country, uh, that the fact that we could have a concert that featured so many moments of the different dancers was, it's a gift to them um, as well as to us. So that was another reason for the big group pieces. We have nice little pieces too, but <laughs> when you go to Jacob's Pill, you want to pull it all out. <laughs> Katie, how yeah. about you? So I think that probably like all of us, where there's a certain amount of despair, and I think as a, as artists, we wanted to reveal that about our world and give you joy and hope. And that's, I think Euclid offers that at the end. And I also think one of my points in Dead Reckoning is we human beings have changed our world bit by bit with what we do and our behavior. Also, human beings have created amazing things. So I think those, that's true about Euclid, how oh, we imagine, yeah. how we, yeah. how, how, what we have found out, what we've discovered, how we think. So I think it's showing two sides of who we are. Yeah. Yeah, actually, when you say that, I'm thinking the invention of the printing press, which is what that book represented, the, uh, the wonderful inventiveness of uh, humankind in contrast to the uh, very sad, destructive potential. Brenda, you said both pieces make a mess. Um, they're both really striking visually. And can you talk about how that layer, um, how, do you, how do you begin to, when do you start thinking about the visual elements? Um, when do you bring the confetti into the rehearsal room? When do you start playing with flour versus chalk? When, when do those elements They're join? different for both. Well, okay. In the case of this chalk mess, the very first image I had was of the chalk. Oh. It was, the book that my friend, the art restorer, was restoring was absolutely gorgeous, bold paper, these beautiful, deep uh, geometric forms against the Gothic print, which, which, you know, that line over here where everyone's doing the crazy movement, that was our Gothic print part. Um, but anyway, I thought, uh, you know, if I had everybody lying on the floor and someone would just make lines, geometric lines on top of them in chalk, that was the first image I had. So, oh. of course, it didn't end up that way. But, um, but it was a graphic uh, inspiration and then the graphic first image for me for that. So when, when, you, when it came into the process, how did you modulate the actual dance? Because the confetti dances quite a bit. I, yes. I watched a few pieces, they're excellent. Yes, they're <laughs> Just, very good, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Years um, of training. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, they add a lot of movement, and there was one section where there's just a huge amount of confetti, and then when it settles, we see what's what it was obscuring. And I thought, whoa. Um, so the confetti is like an element of, it can obscure, it can also be doing something in the, you know, it has all these ways. So how did you sort of then change the dance so that um, I tried to leave a certain amount of space for the confetti. Yes, I could feel that. And yeah. I also think that, uh, you know, the thing about, you know, what we're doing to the world is not actually pretty, but it is also, you know, you go to Shanghai and it's kind of amazing what it looks like, right? It's seductive, yeah. Yes, yeah. so uh, I think that it's not simple. We're not just making the world ugly. We're just making it very difficult to survive mm. with climate change. So uh, it's not simple to see what you're doing, I think. That, that, I think, is part of one of my points in this. Like, people are having fun playing with the confetti. This is what we do. We're having fun. We're, we're, you know, we're taking our 
our bikes and our up through the mountains and we're rock climbing and leaving stuff in the rocks and we're loving nature but we're also hurting it right. so I th that it's not simple mm. um, so I think that for me I don't know exactly when I brought the confetti in I did have different colors of confetti oh, on really? the first dress rehearsal I said well we should just use one color because we can't keep cutting it and that's so that's hand cut confetti it was yeah, the she, first year the worst oh, thing okay. and uh, and then when it was all yellow, I said, oh, we have to keep that. Oh, yes. Because I wanted the changing of what we were doing to the earth that way, but just the accumulation was much more impactful. Right. There's something kind of neonish about yes, it, Yes, it is lime green. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So um, going back to Euclid, three choreographers, um, you talked about wanting to change up your process. Um, did bringing in, uh, and you, that was the first time you worked together, is that correct? Uh, uh, this Collab piece before Boulders and Bones was the first time yeah. Brent and I worked together. So, but you worked together with a third choreographer. So, did it change up your process? And what was it like to work with uh, three choreographers? That's that's a lot of um, creative energy in one studio. Uh, well, I would say actually it ended up being mostly Katie and I working together since Kate lives in New York. Okay. Um, and we had planned to do separate. There were three sections. It's like a concerto form. She does one, I do it. But we uh, started to work in the, in the studio together and it turned out we were working well in the studio together. So we actually did that the whole time in the, at the same time, no, let's not do that, let's do that. And it was after 28 years or 30, I don't know how many, of working separately, we certainly have a, a mutual language and um, so it was very easy. Kate came in and worked on the third section okay. um, and basically left us with some material and then we finished it. Oh, okay. So um, I think her, uh, her uh, hungry movement, I don't know if you know her work, but she's very visceral and physical, which is not unlike our visceral and physical, so there's a reason we like working with her. Um, we, it began to bleed back into the first section, so I think it, there was a, a contagion that happened that uh, pulled it together so uh, in a way that it might not have been if we'd done separate sections. I also think I r discovered something uh, amazing in this pro uh, process of collaboration because before I had collaborated with different artists, composers, visual artists, but um, what I realized as modern choreographers, and I don't know how many fellows are out there and young choreographers, but we choreograph, sometimes we dance choreograph, we direct it, we produce it, we think about what the lighting's gonna be, what are the visuals, what are they gonna wear, what's the music. We actually are producers. So one of the things I realized being in the room when it started to become fluid is we would be changing those roles. Somebody would be up actually choreographing. Someone else would be saying, what, should we put this there or there? They'd be directing. Mm. And I think that that's where we really became fluid. Um, so, and I would say that Brenda and I collaborated as directors and producers and Brenda, Kate, and I collaborated as choreographers. Skin versus clothing in the costume choices. Um, I'll talk about you, okay. since I sort of designed the little things, the, uh, the tunics that look like paper to me, sort of old paper. I think a reviewer said it was the worst thing he ever saw in his life because they look so shabby. Hello. <laughs> um, but I, I, I thought that the simplicity of the body um, as a number uh, you know, the simplicity of those uh, the visuals in the um, Euclid text uh, didn't want any other stuff on it. Um, and also the, the shapes of the bodies. I mean, it's, it's completely a graphic presentation until those tunic comes on and the tunics come on. And then you can go someplace else with it, which is what we were trying to do, which is to go to the more personal place, a two as a couple instead of two. And a, a three, not a triangle, but a threesome. So then we soften up and of course the mess on the floor begins to happen because that's my view of what happens in human relationships. Mess. I also think that the, two, the black and white is modern and in this book, the diagrams were just incredibly modern. They were done in color and with the Gothic print. So, and then we have sort of the tunic like old, there's a reference to other old, you know, 1490s. And uh, so I think that also embodied it in a kind of uh, soft way. I was gonna answer the question in general, which is because we were just looking for someone to be our wardrobe person. And I said to him, you know, we really wanna see the muscles and we wanna see the skin. 
because we want to see the muscles and we want to see the joints because there's something about seeing the weight move through the joints that is really important in what we do. So I said, if you clothe us too much, we're not gonna experience that. If you give us too thick or tight of fa uh, uh, stiff fabric, we're not gonna feel that movement and we're not gonna feel the weight move through the body. So I do care about skin. I do care about the light on the skin so that it shows muscle. I, there are some other things about this, the skin. They have different colors of skin and that's a very important aesthetic uh, part of why we're making work in this day and age. Um, so sh this is who we are. Um, they're not all, uh, they don't all weigh 20 pounds. And that's having different shapes and sizes. That's an important part of what's always been our agenda, if, if you call it an agenda, with the company. Vision. Mm. Vision, yeah, that's much better, thank you. <laughs> But I want to say, I think one of the things that in general in our organization, we believe in creating a context. The context teaches, uh, when people walk in the door, it gives, offers them freedom and guidelines about how to participate. And we do have some dancers that have been with us for 15, 11 years. And so they carry this tradition and culture. And I think it's important to have a critical mass in the company that has that culture and we're careful about who we add in. And I have to say, when we do lose somebody and we add somebody in, we never really know what we're looking for. We're not really replacing the old person. We're like, what else is needed here? What else might we find theatrically, physically? Um, anyway, so it's always a surprise to us. You have a big thing coming up in a year. You have, a year from now, you're 50? 50. No, no, you're, you're in. But come on. You're in this one. So it's, you're, you're. Don't split hair. You are, you're, it's, it's approaching. So how are you, um, how are you celebrating? What are you working on? What are you bringing back? Um, I'd love to hear what's stirring about this, this milestone. And, um, I mean, you've been such an important part of the, of the dance scene in California, but also the United States. So um, it's just, it's really extraordinary that uh, an idea of moving west is now like such a, an institution. So how, how will you celebrate? I think we, we want to do something new to open up the new, you know, uh, since we both plan to live another 50 years, <laughs> we agreed on that. Um, and also, uh, we're looking at what are the, are there, are there a few pieces from the past that could bring those dancers back to mind? I mean, you know, every generation of dancers invent, helps invent this movement, which is a pretty postmodern way to work. Um, so they're all embodied in that work. And so bringing back their images and their ideas is attractive and also wonderful for the current dancers to feel the historic line. Um, but we don't know what we're doing, really. We're probably going to make eight little films of different parts of our organization. That seems like an interesting thing to do. Um, we're actually trying to clean up our closets to see uh, what we have. Um, and uh, Katie was talking today uh, that something that I thought was really interesting. We have to think about succession and what, what, what do we want to carry on. So we're talking about um, how can we create a succession for the values that we've been working toward, not, not, not the structure. who's going who's to be the new boss. Yeah. It's not at issue, though there will have to be one. Um, but uh, but what, what are we doing with our kids' company and our curriculum and our theater. dance company and our theater, all of which we have, that will refresh and generate a new, a new era? So that's what we're thinking about. But I think the thing is how to, the succession of our values mm. yeah. as opposed to our work, mm. And that is what we're, so that's why we have no answers. Mm -hmm.